here with me tonight? You okay? I want to give out to some of my friends that are watching online in the South. I love you. There's a group of people in South Carolina watching right now, even as we speak. We love you. Tennessee, Jay Zeiger, I love you, man. Glad you're watching tonight. And uh, if you're watching online, live stream, um, send us an email. Let us know you're watching. And uh, let's be encouraged by what God is doing in your area, wherever you're watching around the world. We're glad that you've joined us tonight. Turn with me, if you would, please, to John chapter 20. John chapter 20, starting in verse 19. John chapter 20, verse 19. If you don't have your Bibles, you can look at the screens. Let me just turn to mine. Verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Everybody say peace. No, say it like he said it. Peace. Okay. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I'm sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Let's pray. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would bring revelation to this passage of Scripture and that we would understand and receive and walk in the peace that's made available by you through the power of the Holy Spirit. We're, we call down and ask for shalom to come into, into this house. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Tonight we're going to see several follow the Lord and believers baptism because these individuals have had an encounter with the blood of Jesus, had an encounter with his salvation, power, and his shalom peace. And tonight I want to make sure that each and every one of us has had that encounter with shalom and is walking with shalom with peace. And, and, that, and to know that no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what issue or no matter what circumstance, whether you have the answers to your challenges or not, peace is available for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Peace is available for you. Come on, friends. And we all need the peace of Christ. We all need the peace of Jesus. We all need to walk in that covering that brings about a comfort and a strength that helps us endure life's challenges. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be very honest with you tonight. Cheryl and I, my wife and I, are on a bent for the presence of God. And we've been on this chase. Uh, we've always been on this chase for most of our lives, but it's intensified in this season, in this summer. It began in June um, as my, my biological father passed away. And we, we've had some desperate callings out to the Lord and the Lord has been showing us some things and identifying some things in our life that needed to be changed and needed to be shifted. And I'm telling you, I'm in a season right now where I'm seeing and hearing and receiving from the Lord more now than I ever have before. And it's literally rocking my life. It's literally rocking my life. I'm walking prophetically. I'm walking with words of wisdom. I'm walking with words of knowledge. I'm seeing miraculous things happen around me. It has been incredible. It has been awesome. I was flying to Indianapolis for a conference that I got invited to speak. Somebody said, Ooh, are you from Indianapolis? Can I get a witness on India? All right. So I was flying to Indianapolis on a conference and I had uh, done a chapel for our children's ministry and I jumped off the stage and I hyperextended my knee and uh, I was hurting and I got finished with chapels and I got rushed to the airport to make my plane and I sat down to wait on my plane to, to be ready to board and as I was sitting down, I didn't realize it how bad I hurt my knee, but I hurt it pretty bad. And so when I got up, I almost couldn't walk and so I went to the airline and said, hey, I need some time to board the plane. So I got on the plane and I'm, I'm kind of adjusting myself and this lady comes and says, hello, can you help me put uh, my suitcase up? And so I stood up and I helped her put her suitcase up and I kind of limped and she goes, oh my goodness, are you hurt? And I said, yes, I'm sorry. And, uh, and she goes, well, I wouldn't have asked you to do that. And I said, it's all right. I wanted to help you. 
you, and that's okay. And she goes, well, how did you do it? And I said, well, I was teaching a bunch of kids in chapel at our church in our Christian school, and I jumped off the stage, and I hyperextended my knee. And this guy beside me said, so you were showing the kids what not to do in church? And I said, yes, sir, thank you very much. Now shut up. No, I didn't say shut up, but... And the lady said, you're a pastor? And I said, yes. She goes, oh, we just moved from Charleston to Dallas, and, and we're having a hard time. Would you pray for my children that they would find great friends and that we would find a great church? And I said, sure, I'd be glad to do that. And I turned to read you know, my magazine or whatever I wanted to do at the time, and, and she tapped me on the shoulder, and I looked at her, and she said, sir? I said, yes. She goes, I meant, could you pray now? And I said, oh, okay. So I said, sure, I'll be glad to pray now. And when I laid hands with her, the anointing hit me, and I began to pray and minister to her and prophesy over her right as the plane was taking off. And we were praying and praying, and she was crying, and God was touching her, and it was absolutely amazing. I said, amen. The lady in front of her was sitting in the chair in front of her. She turned around, put her knees in the back of the seat, turned around, and she said, excuse me, sir. I said, yes. She goes, could I pray for her? And I said, go for it. She laid hands on that woman and prayed for her. When she got finished, another man said, excuse me, sir, could I pray for her? And that man prayed for her, and for two and a half hours... About a dozen of us had conversation about what God was doing in our churches and our families within our community. Come on, friends. Man, it was incredible. I love this airplane airport ministry I have. I don't know what it's a, what it is about airports, but I love it. It's absolutely incredible. And, and I'm just sensing that and walking with that and moving in that. And it's been fun. It's been a hoot nanny, you know. It's been great. And I went to South Carolina and I got invited to preach at this church and, and, uh, the Lord gave me a message in the middle of the night. I had the, I had the good sermon set aside and ready to go. I had prepared for it for weeks. It, it's my candy stick. You know, it's the pastor, you know, it's the sermon that works. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was in my briefcase and the Lord spoke to me in the middle of the night and said, you're not going to be preaching that message. I'm giving you new revelation for this church. And so I stood up in front of this church and I told them, I said, the Lord gave me a vision about your church. And I said, your church is to be a worship healing house with a prophetic healing presence driven ministry. And you could hear a pin drop in the church. Nobody responded, except for the two people on the front row. Those two people happened to be my friends that came from Augusta. They said amen. But nobody else in the church said amen. And I, he said amen. And, and Christine said amen. And no one else said amen. I looked at him. He's like, it's your service. You know, he's just like, sorry. You know, he's pointing at me. And I felt like something was shifting in the church, but I didn't know what it was. I could have given the message that I prepared. It was a good message, but God gave me revelation for the church. About 20% through the message, the Lord stopped me and said, break a critical, cynical spirit in the house. And so I voiced it out. And we broke a critical, cynical spirit in the house. And a number of people made eye contact with me. And I kind of pastored them through that. And we brought deliverance right in the middle of that message. And friends, after we broke a critical, cynical spirit in the house, the place began to unfold. And it began to erupt. By the end of the message, about 70 to 80% of the church responded to the altar call. And Uh, The last people that I prayed for was a key leader and his wife. And I was praying for the lady, and and I stopped her, and I said, what is going on? And she looked at me, and she said, I'm the critical, cynical spirit. I'm the one that started it. And she goes, I want it gone. And we got to minister to her and break that. A key leader in the house broke a critical, cynical spirit, and her heart was opened and turned again. Come on, guys. Isn't that awesome? They don't have church on Sunday night, but they called for a church service Sunday night. About 250 people showed up. It started at 6.30. I got in my car. I got in my rental car at 11.45 that night. God showed up in power. I'm telling you, man, I'm red hot. Something, woo! Man, I'm getting dreams. I'm getting visions. God's speaking to me in phenomenal ways. It is incredible to be me. Can I get a witness on that? Bald head and everything. 
man, it's been phenomenal. God is just speaking to me in volumes right now. I'm seeing miracles happen. I'm, 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 I'm seeing ministry take place wherever I go and whatever I say, God's presence is with me. Woo! I'm, I'm sharing this for a reason because I'm going to parallel something with you here in just a second. A few months ago, Dr. Lim, can I get a witness on Dr. Lim? Anybody in the house, man. Dr. Lim was at, was, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah, oh, sorry. He was preaching at Prayer Mountain and he was doing a prophetic exercise. He was teaching us how to walk in the gifts of the Spirit and using a prayer language. And, and he said, I want you to just to think about something that you've been contending for and I want you to begin to war in the Spirit. Man, so we were warring in the Spirit and I was praying in the Spirit. And right there, two months ago, I'm in the front row and, and, it's, and I fell to my knees and I felt the presence of God come and pick me up and he lifted me up over the actual prayer mountain. The prayer mountain, the mountain that's behind the property that we own. He lifted me up over prayer mountain and literally slammed me in the dirt. Kind of like a Loki experience if you've watched Avengers, you know. Boom! And I stood up and on the other side of prayer mountain are these pads that have been cut for housing. And new houses are to be developed and that sort of thing. And, and, uh, and as I stood up, all of this development stood, grew up with me. And I'm seeing all of these new neighborhoods being built behind Prayer Mountain. And instantly, I was standing in a house that was mine. A house that I owned. And I'm standing in the, in the front foyer, and I'm seeing this beautiful house split uh, split for your plan, uh, master bedroom, uh, bedrooms on the other side, opening up to the living room and opening up to a glass wall in the back with an infinity style pool in the back, boom, ending in the mountains. And I saw the very mountain that's behind Prayer Mountain as my landscape. I was like, what the heck is, whoa, whoa. How many of you know that would be a powerful experience to have? Whoa, I was... I was, it was, oh, it was amazing. I can't tell you how powerful that was to me. Man, we're seeing kids being transformed in our chapels at ICA. Pastor Josh and I lead worship at, and ministry for our chapels. We're seeing kids literally lit on fire for Jesus. At any given moment, I can announce, you know, kids to come and worship and kids Fight! Come on, guys. They fight to get to the front of the stage where they can worship God. There's literally, we have to calm kids down to say, hey, back off of the stage a little bit. They fight to get there. They're so hungry for God. I'm anointed, friends. Man, it's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. But can I tell you that with, and I could tell you three or four other stories of what God is doing. But can I tell you that right in the midst of what God is doing, that my wife and I, that my family and I are experiencing some of the biggest challenges of our lives. That there are things happening in my family that I wasn't prepared for, that I wasn't prepared to deal with or prepared to handle. My biological father passed away back in June and my mother's left on five acres in Ringgold, Georgia in a house that's falling apart all around her and I have no answers for that. And my, 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 I have family around her that have been good to her and love her and minister to her but there's something more that needs to happen with my mom and I don't have the answers for it. Come on, guys. My chosen father, the man that I identified as a teenager to say, I'm going to, I'm going to look to you as, a, as a, another earthly father in my life, and so I choose you. And he looked at me square in the face and said, son, I choose you. So he's my chosen dad. And I, I loved him. I met him when I was 15 years old, and he's been like a father figure to me all of my growing up years and t as a teenager and into my adulthood. He's a man of wisdom. He's a man that can do anything He's a man of wisdom. On February the 2nd, he rode his mountain bike 18 miles around a mountain. He was recently diagnosed seven months ago with ALS, and now he can't even walk across the kitchen floor. 
I'm ministering to my family. There's a lot of stress going on in my family. There's a lot of things happening in my family's life that I simply don't have the answers for. And I'm faced with this choice and this decision. Am I going to embrace the things of God in my life? And I'm going to, am I going to embrace the presence of God in my life? Am I going to trust Him in everything? Am I going to focus on what He's doing in my life? Or am I going to allow myself to be distracted by the winds of issues and circumstances in my life that can take me off the path of my destiny? We all have choices here, friends. And in this passage of Scripture, I just want to bring and allude to a couple of things, and then I want to pray for Shalom to come. You see these disciples, they have spent three years with Jesus. They were chosen by Jesus. They were picked up by Jesus. They've taken the journey with Jesus for three years. They've been trained. They've been uh, fostered in the love of God. They've been taught on the things of God. They were able to be released and perform miracles. They were a part of a movement with Jesus. From the very beginning of their excitement of being called all the way through the journey of seeing their master, their priest, their, the one that they chose to follow being crucified on the cross. And now they're locked and shut up in a room. They're confused and they're hurt. They have so many issues and so many circumstances, they don't even know which way is up. Scripture says that they were shut up in fear of the Jews, that the Jews would do the same thing to them that they did to Jesus. Oh, come on, friends. Jesus walks in the room. You didn't get that. Jesus walks in the room. The doors were locked, and Jesus walked in the room. And what Jesus did in an instant described and explained what they had been through for three years. The Savior walked in the room. And what did he say? Everybody say it with me. Peace. The same thing that he said when he was in the storm on the boat with the disciples in the boat. He said, peace, be still. Because when the presence of Jesus is in your life, you can find a peace that cannot be explained, cannot be uh, uh, processed in an educational way. It can't be analyzed in a, in, a, in, a, in a mental way. It's only something that you can encounter with God. Come on, friends. And many of us may be shut up in those circumstances. We may all be dealing with something that brings about much confusion and much disarray. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus wants to bring you peace. Jesus wants to bring and release a shalom to you, friends. A shalom to you. Shalom is a weighty presence of God. Like a wet, sloppy sponge. Come on, friends. That will fill you and bring enlightenment and hope to you in the middle of your issues and your circumstances. Whew. Come on, guys. Peace. Shalom. Peace. You can, you, you may have been in a relationship with God and found yourself distance, but God wants to bring peace to you. You see, Jesus will go anywhere he's invited. Come on. He'll go anywhere he's invited. We won't go because we're upright, you know, righteous people. But Jesus will go anywhere where he's invited. If somebody in a crack house calls upon the name of Jesus, he's in the crack house. Come on, guys. Jesus will go anywhere he's invited. And I feel like that there's a call that God wants us to have where we call upon the name of Jesus and ask and cry out for the peace of God. It's modeled in front of us by our great leaders in this house. If there's a quality that I admire most about our leaders is their willingness and their hunger and their, their ability to be vulnerable and real and humble and find the presence of God. Even in the midst of challenges, even in the midst of, of no answers, even in the midst of financial stress, they have a peace that sustains them. I admire Pastor Paul and Pastor Denise for that. 
I was praying this past Monday. I was on my lunch time, and I was praying this past Monday, and I got the Lord drew me to um, up to Far Hills. And there's a new development up there. It's not in the area where I had the vision, but I decided I would go up there. And I was looking through these homes, and I saw some one-story ranchers, and I thought, well, that's similar to my vision. I'll go take a look at it. And I walked into one of the model homes. Friends, it was the home in my vision. Details. It was the home in my vision. I was by myself. I walked in. I opened the door and went, oh, God, I'm glad nobody was there. And I grabbed my chest like, you know, Sanford and Son, like, oh, baby. And I put my hand on the wall, and I looked, and there's a, a wall, that, an accent wall that uh, has decorative design on it. The, the decorative design was exactly the same design in my vision. I freaked out. I was like, Lord, it's a real house. It's something real. A couple of changes here and there, but 90% of what I was seeing was the house in my vision. Woo! Praise the Lord, God's going to give me a house. It's an expensive house. It's a very expensive house. We're going to take an offering for my house here. In, um, I'm joking. That was Monday. I was so excited. I was like, man, I saw that. I saw that. Yes. I woke up Tuesday morning. I was on the phone with my mom, hearing the story of what my dad was dealing with. And guys, found myself in a tailspin. And I, it gripped me. And my mind was like, what am I going to do about this? How am I going to handle this? What about this situation? What about this? What? Anybody ever been there? Can I get a witness? And I stopped, and I grabbed my iPhone, and I went to Bethel Live. I went to Pandora. I stuck those headphones in my ears. I turned them as loud as I could, and I began shouting and singing and worshiping in my car. I, been get, I, I was crying. I said, I'm not going to let this piece go. I'm not going to let this piece go. I'm, I'm not going to be distracted by what's going on. I'm going to hold on to what you're doing in my life, God. I know your hand is upon me. You're going to orchestrate and ordain my, the steps of my life. I'm not going to be confused about it. Come on, guys. I'm not going to find myself being distracted by what everybody else says I should do or shouldn't do or how to live or what not to live. Jesus, you're going to bring peace to me. And I locked myself into his presence. Friends, I couldn't even drive the car. I was crying so hard. And I finally got a hold of myself and I was able to get the car going and I went to Prayer Mountain in my little cubicle up there and, and I locked myself in my little cubicle with no door. I didn't care. And I just began calling out and praying and calling out and praying and, and the Lord began giving me strategy and began giving me a plan, began to encourage me. And right in the middle of what the enemy was trying to do to bring distraction to me, I got a divine strategy to help take prayer mountain to a whole nother level. Shalom. Shalom. I want you to look at this. Just two little points. <laughs> Receive shalom. Number one, thank you very much. Can I get a witness on that? And number two, when Jesus came into the peace uh, room and brought peace, brought shalom into the room, then he said, peace be unto you again. He said it twice. And then he looked at them and he breathed onto them. And my daughter came to me. She had no idea what, was I, what I was preaching tonight. She came to me as I was kneeling down. She said, Tim. Well, she said, Daddy. She didn't say Tim. She said, Daddy, I feel like I'm supposed to tell you this. I said, yeah. She goes, you know, Pastor Denise is talking about the fire of God. She goes, you know, we need oxygen. Oxygen is what feeds the fire, is what infuses the fire. And she said this. She said, I just feel like God wants to breathe on us. breathe on us because oxygen intensifies the flame Jesus said peace be with you and he, breathed, he took a deep breath and went 
and released a Holy Ghost heaven sent oxygen that poured out Holy Spirit on them. And Holy Spirit came and ministered. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. Golly. Receive the Holy Spirit. We know the encounters in Acts chapter 2 when the Spirit came in fire and they began to speak in tongues and the church was birthed we see that 3,000 men, not including women and children, were added to the church that day. And those men, those 11 men, began the next chapter of establishing the kingdom of heaven on the earth through shalom and fire, through the peace of God that gave them the strength and the fortitude to maintain the pressure and the anointing from the Holy Spirit to bring a fire to people that desperately needed it and wanted it. Do you have shalom? And do you have the fire? That's it. Do you have shalom? And do you have the fire? I want to encourage you to call out to the Lord. I want to encourage you to call out to the Lord tonight. Tonight, we have young men and women who have given their lives to Jesus who are going to be following the Lord in believer's baptism. And at this time, if you are a baptismal candidate, I want you to to bring your cards with you and come up and sit here to the left to sit on these steps and, and kind of spread out on the steps. Just spread out on the steps. And can we give these folks a hand for responding to the Lord? Young Cliff has given his life to Christ and God's rocking his world and the Lord is opening the door for him to understand his destiny and his plan. It's a fine young man, little Johnny Redenzik, one of our young ladies in our church who loves Jesus with all of her heart, is following the Lord in baptism. Another one of our young ladies right there, amazing people, just kind of spread out over all across. Friends, if you'll just kind of spread out. Tangel, who helps oversee our children's church ministry. She's up here following the Lord in baptism. So what I'd like to do is, as these folks are being ministered to, we're going to invite Kairos and some key leaders, if you would, just to come forward. And I want you to begin praying for them and ministering to them and prophesying to them. I want everyone in the room to stand up because we're about to move into the altar call. And we're going to have an altar call, and then we're going to watch these folks follow the Lord in believer's baptism. Uh, Kairos, go ahead and be released. Start going for it, praying and ministering to these folks. And as this is happening, I want you to put your eyes on me. Everyone in the room, put your eyes on me. Do not leave this room without an opportunity to receive shalom in your circumstance. Do not leave this room without an opportunity, without you responding to the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to breathe on your life and bring a fire and bring a ministry to you. All within this room, I want you just to close your eyes and bow your heads and lift up your hands. And I just want you to receive this prayer. I'm going to ask you to respond. I'm going to count to three after I pray. And if you want to respond to grab a hold of the presence of God, if you want to cry out for shalom to come into the room of your heart, if you need the fire of God to come for you to receive Holy Spirit, then I want you to respond after I pray. And I want you to come to this side of the altar. We're just going to play some music softly in the background. But tonight I believe that the Lord is preparing His house for the sons and daughters of this house to be ministers of shalom peace and to embrace what God is doing even in the midst of the storm, even in the middle of the distraction, God wants to do great things. So Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we've released your word. We see what your son did in that room with your disciples. And Jesus, we invite you to come into the room. Come on, friends. 
we invite you to come into the room. And Lord, there's a call on us to walk in your peace, to be ministers of your peace, to receive your love and your encouragement, to give us a sense of hope in the midst of the storm. Lord Jesus, I don't have all the answers of what my family's dealing with and what, what, what's happening in my life right now, but you do, and I trust you. And Lord, there are many of us in this room that are in similar situations where it's more easy to be distracted and to turn away and to, into worry and fear that we miss the fact that you want to bring your peace right in the middle of our storm. I pray, Lord, that you would move on the hearts of these people. I'm feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit stirring in this room. I'm actually sensing angelic activity, which to me means that heaven wants to communicate to you. He wants to convey things. I'm going to ask part of our leadership team if you would get ready and just come to the right-hand side, my right, up here on this stage. If you're not ministering prophetically, I want leaders to come to the right. I'm waiting for leaders to respond. I'm going to count to three. And if you need encouragement, ministry, if you want to sense and receive a peace and a shalom of God, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask you to respond. I don't want you to delay and I want you to respond. What do you need? Do you need shalom? Do you need to receive Holy Spirit fire? What do you need tonight? Don't leave this place without an opportunity to encounter both. One, two, three. Come on, let's respond to the Lord. Let's just come together and respond to the Lord. Just reach out to someone if you need prayer, if you need encouragement. There's business happening in the house tonight. Business happening in the house tonight. Maybe you were here tonight and you gave your life to Jesus Christ in the earlier altar call. And you invited Jesus to come in your life. And you want to respond in baptism. I'm telling you, it's not too late to respond. You can be baptized tonight. We, we don't have a change of clothes for you. You can be baptized tonight if you want. Or you can be baptized next time. But just come and respond. Be touched by the presence of Jesus. Be touched by the shalom of God. Peace come in the room. Peace come in the room. God's bringing restoration to you, friends. He's bringing restoration. He's renewing you. He's renewing you. He's changing a life. He's turning a life right side up, my friend. You're being rocked by the presence of God right now. There's a fire that's going to be released onto you. Just open your hands right now. Can I have a couple of men just to come and stand behind him? Father, I pray that you would give him your peace right now in Jesus' name. Minister to him. Holy Spirit, touch him. Touch this family right now. Touch this family. Touch this family. Your little one right here is a special one. She's going to love Jesus. I see her dancing in the spirit. I see her twirling and twisting and dancing. She's got a talent for dance, but she's going to use that talent to glorify God. This family is about to get rocked in the presence of God, friends. Let's reach out to this family, friends, if we can. Oh, there's a call of God on, on, on a couple of these men. I'm seeing a fire that's been shut up in your bones about to be released. There's a call on some of you men. Holy Spirit, touch this gentleman right now in Jesus' name. Touch him right now in Jesus' name. Can someone lay hands on this gentleman right here? Jordan, go. Touch him right in the chest. Right in the chest. I'm just sensing right now a fire being released out of you, brother. A boldness to be a representation of the kingdom of God. A son of God rising up to an identity that's only that only he belongs to heaven and heaven only. He's nobody else's call boy. He's nobody else's uh, 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 servant. He is a servant of God. I see this man being used mightily in the power of God. Touch him, God. Wreck him. Wreck him in your presence. Lay hands on him, Jordan. Pray for the Holy Spirit to come. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
wow. good. God is good. God is good. Thank you for your shalom, peace. Thank you for the shalom of heaven coming and ministering to us, Lord Jesus, that we can withstand and have strength. My heart goes out for the Campbell family. We pray for Sharon Campbell that she would be completely healed in Jesus' name. Our hearts go out towards the Campbell family. I know Brian was here earlier. Our hearts go out towards the Campbell family. We pray for a miracle to take place. We pray for Shalom to come into the room and bring healing to Sharon. Let her be a testimony of your healing, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to ask you, if you would, please, just to stand with me and Kind of make your way to the front. We're going to open and we're going to stir the waters right now. We're going to close this time in baptism. Keep playing, friends. It's gorgeous. If you're still being prayed to, prayed with, if you're still being encouraged in the Spirit, do that. But if you're not, I, I don't want you to, to be distracted, but just come forward and just kind of gather around if you could. And we're going to start baptizing tonight. This great testimony of people. Our first one. Miss Tony, if you'll come forward now. Tony, come on. Come on, sweetie. Right here, Miss Tony, right here. So, Lord, we just thank you for the faith of these individuals and the great testimony of your love over these individuals. We ask God that you touch them in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, friends. Wow. Wow. to this young one. Friends, she came to Children's Church in June. She was so apprehensive and scared. She actually didn't want to stay. Friends, it took a few weeks, but she ended up falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with the presence of God, invited Jesus in her heart, and she's given her life as a testimony through baptism. Woo! Isn't that awesome, friends? Come on, give her... Give her applause. That's awesome. Wow. Come on, Johnny. Let's do this, girl. How many of you know Johnny Redenti? Denise, get up there. Come on.
you, Johnny. It's really appropriate just to stretch out your hands during this time and let's worship too. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Wouldn't it be great if everyone that's being baptized, even people watching online will go, man, I want to do that next month. And, and so can everybody just spend a time just worshiping and praying? Come on, let's bathe every person with prayer. Bathe every person. This is a big deal for them. So I don't want us just to watch. I want us to watch and pray. I want us to worship and pray. Come on. Come on, friends. Come on, friends. Let's give the Lord a shout. Wow. Children. Children. Your mama is a woman of God. How many of you, you know that? Your mother's a woman of God. Do you see the testimony of her life? Your mother is a woman of God. Wow. for God, friends. This is a man of God hungry, hungry for his presence.
let's respond to what God is doing in these waters. Woo. Come on, ladies, let's go. Man, God is good. friends, come on. Let's stretch your hands out to this lady. Let's let God minister to her and touch her. There's a reawakening in her life. She testified tonight of this reawakening. God's doing great things in her. New beginnings for her. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, great testimonies. How many of you were touched by the presence of God tonight? You received shalom. You're walking in Holy Spirit fire. Go make a difference in the world. Friends, we'll see you Wednesday night.